Hello, uh, this is my custom track tutorial. This is just going to be modeling a custom track. We're not actually going to cover the actual track creation process. I recommend looking at my um, previous custom track tutorial, um, which is about an hour long. That goes through the very basics of custom tracks. Um, this should be a more comprehensive guide into how to make stuff in Blender. Um, uh, yeah. So I guess let's let's jump right in. Let's have a new scene. Let's go to full screen. So this is this is a cool thing. And then you can hit Windows to get out of that. Um, so right now we're presented with I have a bunch of extra stuff up here. Like this is not normal. This is not normal. Um, uh, this down here is not normal. Um, but yours should look pretty similar to mine. I have a bunch of if you go edit preferences. This is where you can see what add-ons you have. So I have this Blender Kit Online Asset Library. I have landscape add-ons. And so you can install these add-ons. Um, most of them are not very useful. There is a Marty Kurt Wee um, spiral generator, which is, uh, I probably skipped over it, but that is the one add-on that I do use. Here we go, the spiral road. But otherwise, it's just going to be generic Blender. So you need to have a mouse for Blender. You scroll in and out with the wheel to zoom in and out. You hit middle mouse. Oh, hold on. So you hit N to bring up this bar. N to open and to close. T is for this toolbar. Um, we have N for Nelly. Uh, and we can go to our um, one of my screencast keys and turn them on. So now at the bottom left, you should be able to see I'm doing keyboard and stuff. So I'm hitting middle mouse to rotate around this cube. I'm using shift middle mouse to pan my view around. Scroll in, scroll out. And so just you know, take some time getting used to scrolling. If you ever get lost, um, I, you know, zoom in all the way over here and you can't find your way back. What you can do, you can hit uh, number pad one, and this doesn't work for me. Or you can go up here, this gizmo, and this puts you in top view, and then you can click on this, and that puts you in a side view, and just make sure the object that you want is centered, and now you're a lot more centered on your object. Additionally, you can also, uh, I have it bound to the uh, Q. It should be number pad period to zoom in on an object. And you, I've changed this in edit preferences, and then input, you can hit emulate numpad. I don't have a numpad, however, it still doesn't work for me. Um, actually, maybe, hold on. Let's see, what happens if I press one? Yeah, that doesn't work. So uh, I'm not sure why it doesn't like that. Um, but you can also emulate three button mouse if you don't have that. Um, it requires you to hit control shift to move around, I'm not sure. Um, but these are the stuff I have on. So we can move around in our scene, scrolling, shift, zooming in, zooming out, and then number pad period is the default key. So you, you're, you've already been attacked by one key. Okay, number pad period to zoom in. Or if you have it bound, I can't remember exactly what I have it mapped to. Um, uh, let's see if I can find it. Um, Let's see. Okay, I can't find it, but it is in here, and uh, you can zoom in on objects. Regardless of that, uh, yeah, sorry, I'm not the best Blender user, so I maybe shouldn't be doing that, but we have, well, why should we know, uh, why should we know stuff? Uh, sorry keyboard presses, hotkeys, hotkeys, that's the word. Um, I, so if I want to move this cube, I press G to move. So there are three main tools, G to move, a right click to cancel, R to rotate, and S to scale. And then if you want to lock this to an axis, if you want to go on this X direction, that's red here, X, you hit G and then X and this locks it to an axis. G, Y locks it to the Y axis. 
r x rotates along the x direction, uh, r z along the z direction. That's the most common rotation I do. R z is to rotate along the z direction, and then you can similarly do s z to scale on the z direction. And you can also say I want to move. You can G and control click to snap. Now I'm snapped to the grid uh, and right click to cancel. Or I can uh, G, X, and 1, G, X, 10. You can actually type in the numbers and that will move it along that direction by that amount. Um, so if you want to scale everything up, everything up 100, you select everything by hitting A. A for all, and then S, and then 100. And that's how you scale everything up by 100. Enter to enter, and now you can see we can't see anything. And that is because we scaled everything too large. So you'd need to go N to bring up this side panel, and down to the View tab, and then you'd need to increase this. Uh, increase this here. And now we can see things. But let me undo that. Um, okay, and Q to zoom back in for me, number pad period for you. So we know how to select everything. That's A, or you can drag and click, click and drag, I guess that's it. X to delete. You can hit the delete, delete key, um, it's just a matter of hotkeys. So X is to delete, A is to select everything. R is to rotate, S is to, S is to scale, G is to grab, and then you can lock it, lock it to axis. So we deleted our de default cube, like any successful Blender user should do. And then uh, I guess let's talk about how do I add an object. So for this, you can either go add, you can do everything in the menus here. So you can go, uh, if we want to add an object, so I added a plane, and I'll get to that. Uh, you, can, you can do this and grab it. We are grabbing it on each axis. It's just a lot less efficient than GX, GY, GZ. At least in my mind. You can rotate it similarly. And I believe uh, if you... Uh, yeah, now we're lo locked to an axis. Um, and then a scale, and likewise we can scale on the Y, we can scale on the X, um, etc. But uh, I don't like doing that. I like using the hotkeys for that. Once you know it, it just becomes instinctual. So you can either add mesh cube, or you can a shift A, and then M for mesh and P for plane, or I guess shift A, M, C for cube. And now to get rid of this, let's go back to our box select. So this is T to bring up this panel. Um, I, I shift A to add the object, and we added a mesh. So shift A, we can add a mesh, we can add a curve. Uh, I don't know what surfaces are. Let's see, a cone. Okay. Uh, we have some meta balls, but these are pretty fun. We just like have one here. Uh, Shift A, mesh, or meta ball, ball, and like they join together. So that's pretty cool. It's not going to be useful for us in track creation. Uh, none of these are going to be relevant for us. You might want to do lighting. Um, so that's where you would do light stuff here, but we're not going to cover that here. So we've talked about the interface, so we have how do we move around in the scene, how do we add objects to scenes, how do we select everything, how do we delete things. So maybe we'll, we want to know, and we'll get to track creation eventually. Um, uh, so how do we maybe manipulate an object. So let's have this plane, and now let's say I want to move this vertex up. How do I do that? G just grabs the whole thing. What you have to do is you have to go into edit mode. So you either go up here into edit mode, or you hit tab. Tab is going to be one of the most common tools behind grab, maybe. Um, uh, and so we go, and then we can select each vertex, and we can move each vertex around. You can grab all vertices and move them here, but note that the origin point, this orange dot, 
is still in the center. So when we move it around, okay, and now when we rotate, it rotates relative to this origin point. And we most of the time don't want that. Uh, what you do want to do in edit mode is to manipulate vertices. So let's maybe um, have a cube. And uh, one thing that we might do, we're in solid view right now. So there, this is material preview. This is wireframe mode. And this is solid mode. And so some things that I like to do is enable matte cap. So go into this viewport shading, matte cap. And then we're going to do it random. And we're going to turn on cavity. And we're going to maybe say, uh, Yeah, that's that's good. Um, and so this just makes it easier to see what are the different ridges to an object. Um, I, I, so then I can tab into edit mode. I can select a vertex G to grab it around, G to move on the X direction. So we can see something like this, G to move on the X direction, G to move on the Y direction. We can uh, maybe box select these and we can rotate them on the Z direction we can move them out on the y and x directions, something like that. So now we've, now we've learned the basics of how do we edit an object. Most of that is done through edit mode. Um, uh, there's going to be more tools in edit mode. Some common things we're going to be using is control R for loop cuts. This makes loop cuts and you can scroll up or down on your mouse wheel uh, to change the number of them. And then if you click, you can choose where on the object you want to have it. So we can have it really low down here, and then we can take this all out and scale it. So now we've added some detail there. We can add another loop cut, and we can maybe bring this in some. And another tool in edit mode that we're going to need for our disposal is maybe the most important. It's extrude, E to extrude. And this automatically defaults to the Z direction. Um, I, oops, so I, I, if I extrude, we're automatically in the Z direction. If you press Z again, oops, uh, sorry. Uh, if, I autom if I press Z again, I'm no longer bound in the Z direction, but let me press Z again. One thing when you extrude, if you then like right click, oh, I don't want to do that. If you then grab, note that there are two sets of vertices. So I right click to cancel, there's actually two vertices overlapping right here. G to grab, there's two sets of vertices. So we can deal with this at the very end by go selecting A in edit mode, M to merge by distance. M is the merge key, and merge key is very important. So again, you can do all of this in here. So we had, uh, I haven't used these menus. Um, I, but they, some of them are, are useful when you're like, what's, what's the thing for that? I'm not sure. You go digging through these menus like, oh, that's, that's that. Um, but most of the times, the tools you're looking for are the common ones, which have pretty ubiquitous shortcuts. So we have M to merge by distance. So if you wanted to take this one, merge it with that one, take this one, shift click, select that one, merge at last, and then this vertex joins that one, and there's no two vertices there. It's just that one vertex. Okay, so now maybe we're ready to start actually doing modeling stuff. Yeah, so let's go into top view. So this is number pad seven. Um, I, I, it doesn't work for me, but you can use this gizmo here. And uh, I, yeah, I guess let's, let's get into it. So we're gonna add an object, and so there are well, actually, before we, well, sort of when we get into it. So uh, there are two ways of making Mario Kart Wii custom track roads. So this is one way, and I'm going to use the other way. Um, but we're going to take a plane, and so we're going to go down to this modifiers tab. And this modifier has a bunch of stuff. Um, uh, so we can use an array, and we can array it out there. Um, uh, we can uh, add a, let's say, maybe a uh, solidify and then uh, we can increase the thickness and now we have a cube now we can use a displace modifier 
and we can use a texture that's actually going to be different parameters, high strength, and we're going to use a clouds texture, maybe. Uh, clouds, and now we have random noise. Anyways, uh, so there are a bunch of, that wasn't actually very, very useful uh, at showing what I wanted to show, but there's a bunch of different uh, modifiers that you can use here that uh, modify an object. So one way to do it is we're going to use the subdiv surface. So what does a subdiv surface do? When you tab into edit mode, you're like, oh, nothing has changed. Um, but if you then apply this modifier, and we tab into edit mode, we see things have changed. We have extra vertices here. So I'm going to undo that. Uh, once you apply a modifier, that is a destructive process, and it's hard to then go back and, uh, if you want to undo your beginning road, then that requires tweaking after the fact. So here's one way to do it. We have subdiv surface, which uh, better illustrated on a cube. So uh, we add subdiv on this cube, and you can see it's just subdividing this cube. And if we were to maybe increase the amount, you can see it makes it more and more circular. But uh, let's add a plane. Shift A M P is the shortcut for that. I'm still old school on adding planes, so I'm slow about that. Either way, doesn't really matter. Subdiv surface, let's get into it. Go into top view, tab into edit mode, select these vertices. Now we're in edit mode. And we have this modifier that's acting right now uh, in a, it hasn't been applied yet. So it's not actually manipulating any actual geometry, which is what we're doing in edit mode. Um, and it's only doing it after the fact. So right now we're editing the ge geometry. What did I do? I used E to extrude. And then I used R to rotate, S to scale, E to extrude, R to rotate, S to scale maybe, E to extrude, R to rotate, S to scale, E to extrude, R to rotate, S to scale. So this is one way of making a custom track. Uh, I don't prefer it. So now let's go to the other way of making a custom track. So for this, we're going to have a plane. We're going to add a curve modifier. We're going to first add an array modifier, and then we're going to have a curve modifier. So let's just increase this to something like 20 for now. We're going to merge, and this auto merges um, vertices when we array them along, so that way we don't have overlapping um, vertices. Automatically merges them, and so it wants a curve. So let's add a curve, shift A, curve, and let's have a Bezier curve. And now you can see it's added a Bezier curve here. Um, you can see in this here, we're now selecting our Bezier curve. And you want to strictly go into edit mode here. Do not do, not do any object mode manipulations. Uh, you'll get some bad results with where the origin is. Um, but what you want to do is you want to first go, you want to. Uh, Select this busy curve, so now you can see it's sort of following it. And the magic happens when we tab into edit mode selecting this busy curve, so now we can edit these, and you can see it's it's going along with it. So we're G to grab, R to rotate, G to grab, S to scale, R to rotate, E to extrude, R to rotate, S to scale, E to extrude, R to rotate, S to scale, E to extrude, R to rotate, and then uh, if we want to say, well, this is a really flat track, let's not have it be that flat. What we can do is we can shift select these and GZ, and this uh, increases on the Z direction. Uh, you can control box select to deselect a vertex, GZ, control click, and GZ. And uh, maybe let's extrude this out one more time. And you can see we now have more curve than we do have objects. So we increase the account, the account here. And so now we have a track. 
there's always going to be bad overlap here. That's just something you have to deal with. Um, and, but one thing we need to do first is like, look at this, look at this geometry right here. Like that's, that's a no go. We want it to be smoother. How do we make it smoother? What we do is we go select a plane, select a plane and go into edit mode. So edit mode, we're editing geometry. So you scale on the X direction. And now here's what it looks like on the curve, a lot smoother. There's many, if I were to apply this, you'd see all the vertices here. I think I want to scale it out a bit more. I also want to add two loop cuts going this way. Control R to add loop cuts, if you remember, scroll up uh, and I'll put them there. So now we have extra vertices going around the road. And so now let's increase here. And so I, uh, Honestly, this might be good. So I'm going to quickly apply, see what the geometry looks like. So here's the geometry of our road. Actually, this looks pretty good. Um, and uh, one thing that I forgot to do, now that I'm remembering, so we go back to where we have our modifiers applied. So we select our busy curve. And if we don't like the tilt of this, uh, one thing we can do is press Control T, and this tilts our busy curve. And we can also press shift while we're doing this to make it smoother. If you want to grab it, but move it very slowly, you G and then shift, and then it moves it more fine. Uh, right click to cancel. Um, and uh, yeah, now I like this. Uh, so I'm going to again, apply these modifiers. And once you've applied the modifiers, we can delete this curve. Once you apply the modifiers once and only once you're done, actually, um, I, you're like 100% satisfied with the road. This is a tutorial track, so it's going to be really, really simple. Um, I, I could have made this more complex, uh, oops, but uh, this gets the point across. If you want to do like a section uh, where you drive, drive, do a trick, and then you want to drive on more road. Um, sorry, that was a god awful explanation, but you can always add another Bezier curve um, and keep creating road that way. Um, so now that we've applied our modifiers, we maybe want to uh, add some off-road to this thing. Actually, maybe one thing we want to do is just uh, add, a, add a rock wall to all of this. So one tool that's very useful is uh, alt click. I believe it's, uh, maybe it's control click. Um, uh, if depending on your settings here of emulate numpad. Um, uh, and then we're going to select this outer line of vertices. So one other shortcut that's very useful is to do control click. So now I'm control clicking and I'm selecting this inner, it picks the shortest path you can always control Z to undo, even the selection. So I've now gone back in the selection and uh, shift click to uh, shift click to add more vertices. I'm just gonna hit everything in EZ. What does EZ do? Extrude on the Z axis. So sweet, now we have some walls to our track. And uh, maybe I say, actually, I don't think that racers can make this distance. Let me Let me smooth this out. So one thing we can do is we can go we can go into face mode. Right now we're in vertex mode. So if I want to select these this whole line, what I could do is I could select all of these, and then I can move them around. Or if I just wanted to select these faces, I could just shift select these faces here. Um. So let's go in top view, and if I was just to R rotate, like you see that the other stuff isn't following it. So one tool that we use often is proportional editing. So there's a drop down menu here, which you can also say like connected only. Um, I, you can also try out different things, but for our purposes, the base, the base is enough. So you can uh, increase your sc scroll wheel to increase the amount uh, that this proportional editing changes. So I'm going to rotate here maybe. 
actually I'm not liking this at all so I'm gonna grab this out first and then I'm gonna rotate it hmm I'm I'm not quite sure what's good here because uh, now this looks absolute garbage um, you can always base select like these and just move it in uh, and worst comes to worst you can always select these vertices and just nudge them in yeah that's actually what we're going to do and if we select this we also have to select anything behind it one thing we can do uh, is alt z and this selects both the thing and the vertex underneath it um, that's not something that you have to remember um, but it is nice to remember so we're just shift clicking around grabbing the objects that we want we're in o for proportional editing you notice that we have some whack uh, geometry here uh, that's going to affect our UV unwrapping um, but it shouldn't be that much of an issue uh, yeah so now let's maybe add some off-road so uh, let's just go grab literally all of this so we're not selecting anything on the bottom just the top ring we're going to E to extrude, we're going to right click to cancel, and then we're going to uh, turn off proportional editing and S to scale. Now look what we've done. We have successfully added off-road to our track. And uh, this uh, is the basic method. Uh, if, you, if you had, uh, if you really wanted to uh, do uh, do it well uh, off-road one uh, method that you can do is e to extrude and then uh, select these and f to fill f is another very common tool e to extrude f to fill oh and so we select all these f to fill and then select all these f to fill and so now we're achieving much of the same result um, and it also gives you more control whereas extrude might not work out as nicely if you had a curve that went any which way. Um, and, and so extruding might not extrude in all the ways that you expect. You can always do one part at a time. So for example, uh, if we had a, uh, yeah, so if we had here and uh, you're like, well, I think if I scale it in, like maybe one place is coming in more than the other, and I don't like it. Oops. So I uh, maybe let's maybe let's only select these, and maybe let's uh, e to extrude s to scale, and maybe I then I can grab this and top it. Like maybe I like this result than the other result. Um, and so that's a matter of playing with it, figuring out what's what's right. If you notice, I'm constantly pressing G to make sure that I don't have any duplicated vertices after I've extruded and I'm canceling stuff. Um, it's a very common thing to accidentally have duplicated vertices, which aren't the worst thing in the world, as you can pretty easily A, merge by distance, um, M to merge, but it is something to be aware about. Um, I, Either way, let's add some off-road. Control click, E to extrude, right click to cancel any movement, S to scale. And now let's maybe also add a fence here. So we're going to extrude and up on the Z axis. And then a G, GZ, right? Um, and then we're going to select this outer loop. And so you can see we tried to control click, but it's taking the actual shortest path. Surprise, surprise. So you just uh, pick a bunch of shortest paths on the way. Um, and then that's how you get the result that you want. E to extrude, right click to cancel, S to scale. And if we're feeling particularly lazy, we can just E to extrude, Z up, S out, uh, S out. E to extrude, Z up, S out. E to extrude Z up and sure something like that so now we have our road we have our off-road we have a fence we have walls 
I uh, maybe we, we I guess hmm. we can uh, if we wanted to connect these how do we do that uh, one thing we can do is we can just tab into edit mode these are part of the same object and we can just select these F to fill select these F to fill select these F to fill and then we can uh, then well this needs to be extruded down that needs to be extruded down and I guess so does this so we can just select all these and extrude it down here um, so is this bad geometry yes is because it's not connected to this face is no longer connected to here I'm not sure of a better way to preserve the flow of topology as it were um, so now I'm going to Alt Z to select these and merge by distance. Um, I, as I believe, merge by distance, yeah, it doesn't, like these aren't close enough for it to automatically merge. So you have to go into X ray mode and uh, select them that way. So Alt Z to get back out of X ray mode. And then uh, I, maybe we start texturing. Well, uh, let's first add a add a plane at the bottom here. That's just going to be our water, okay? And then a, let's add a road. And so here's where we're going to do material stuff. So before we had we did a modifier. We had a plane that we used a modifier to then a, uh, modify the plane. Uh huh. Um, now we add an object, a plane. And now we're going to take this, actually let's take this first, and let's add a, a material to it. So you go to the Material Properties tab, and we're going to have a new material, and let's name this water. And actually you can name, double click here, and say this is coarse, and this is water. Water. So let's give this water some water material. So let's have a new image texture. So if we were to do a base texture, and we went into material preview mode we can see by changing and let's call this a course and you change the base color here it changes on there so what we want to do is instead of a base color we want image texture so we want to open this mm, let's see go up to tutorial track the fourth textures and uh, let's find the base uh, this will work with Billy Noodle's um, animation plugin for Mario Kart Wii of creating automatic uh, water animation. So it doesn't matter that this is the wrong material, etc., as long as it has the right scaling that we're looking for. So maybe, yeah, so we have, we need to go back into material preview mode. For here, this is like a totally different window. So as you can see, num none of our map cap settings uh, we had er earlier in here of like map cap and random, none of those are uh, applied in here. This is a totally separate window. What we can do, we can scale, scale stuff in here, or we can scale stuff in the UV editing. A to select everything, S to scale. So now you can see we've scaled up our water. I guess scaled down. Scaled up the texture on the water, but scaled down the water. Anyways, so now we have a course on our course. So let's give it a texture. Image texture, open, and textures. We're in tutorial track the fourth, and we want a road texture. So our road texture is going to be this. Why not? Actually, let's go there. Yeah, that looks, that looks fun. Let's see if it does anything. So obviously, UVs are terrible right now. So what we're going to do. We're going to, if you, if you didn't model any of this off-road immediately, what you could have done is you could just model the curve and then apply the material to the curve, and that automatically nicely unwraps it. I'm going to do it uh, a slightly different way. So I'm going to, and this way it always works. I'm going to uh, UU. This sorry, you to bring up the UV mapping, so we can take everything here. We can U and project from view, 
And now you can see this is just mapped all the vertices onto here. So we can scale it up and you can see the road poking through. Um, we're just projecting all these vertices from view. Um, you, we can also do like a cube project. Uh, you cube project C and then it tries a different method of unwrapping. We can also try um, all of these different smart UV project and the default settings and it tries to minimize spacing in here. You can do a light map pack um, which is here and then this tries to, well you can see what it is doing um, and it's you know not preserving the UVs per se but it's uh, doing the best that it can at getting texture space. Anyways, uh, what we want to do is we want to select these. You, oh, sorry, I hit. If you hit a random key, always control Z. Even if you think you hit a random key, always just do that. So I unwrapped it, and this looks like where we want it. This is going to be off road, this is going to be off road, and we have the darker textures around here. So now we go here and we hit UU. And now we go here, hit UU. No, this is painful. We don't want that. So what do we do instead? What we can do is we can go here, control shift click there. What did I do? I did a shortcut. So you can either go control select here, pick shortest path, or you can control shift click and it picks the grid. Um, but if you don't want to do that, you can always do it the longer way. Um, and then we're going to U and then follow active plots. This is an amazing thing. And so now all of these are just nicely wrapped out. Pick shortest path, follow active clods. And I'm hitting F U F. U follow active clods. And now we can see these are all nicely, oop, sorry, these are all nicely tiled together. Um, this texture itself might not be the best um, texture in the world. So I'm not, not in love with this texture. Um, one thing about this, uh, let's try the grid, see if it's any better. No, it didn't do any difference, which I'm not surprised at. Um, but you can see we've unwrapped some of our wood. So now what we're going to do, we're just going to go around here, control shift click, control shift click, do that same process, and here, and U, F, follow. And now look at that, we have a road. Why is this stretched? Uh, well, because that's follow, follow path that doesn't always work. Plus the geometry on this is whack anyways. So what do we do to fix this? Uh, I think it's all good up until here. So I'm going to go in here. Uh, I can either shift select all these or I can control click to select these. U, U. And then I can go and try and see if this works. U, follow active clubs. So this did it better. Um, I, and I think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go to UV editing tab. Notice they're all weird shaped. We want them in a grid. So if we have them, uh, uh, notice over here, we have these uh, vertices pretty much in a square. Uh, it's not quite in a square, but like look at how close these are to being square. So that's what we're going to want to do. Control shift click, and we want these to make these all into squares. So one thing we can do is we can select these, S, Y, zero, scale on the Y direction by zero, just select these, S, Y, zero, select these, S, Y, zero, etc. But this is going to be painful. You really don't want to do that. So there's an add-on which you have to install, but it is Magic UV. I, I won't walk you through the process of uh, installing that, but there should be instructions when you go to the Magic UV website or the GitHub for that, and uh, UV manipulation, uh, oh, UV squares, sorry, UV squares, not magic UV, and we're gonna A to select everything, to grid by shape. And we're gonna scale this down, and now shift to make it smoother, and now we have a road. It's stretched out because the geometry over here is stretched out by nature. Um, I, so that's the downside of our poor um, geometry there. And uh, if we did want to fix this, uh, basically we're going to have to 
uh, move some of these vertices around and re-unref. So what we'd have to do would be something like go to here and then start moving stuff around until you get it more square-like. Um, obviously this messes with the, the existing um, ex existing textures that are already mapped on here. But what we're going to do is we're going to re-UV unwrap it. Um, I don't even know. Is that good? I don't know if that's good. Uh, but let's try this again. So we're going to select this, follow, and then, uh, oh, it worked out. Okay. Uh, yeah, so that looks more normal. Uh, obviously, this is still pretty skewed because these are not straight. Uh, and we could uh, go around here to grid by shape. And then we'd need to, you can GY to move all these UVs up here. SX, scale on X direction. SX, scale on the X direction. And now this looks more, more normal. Um, and so now that we have this all textured, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of this, control shift clicking, um, I, and then I'm going to hit uh, P to separate by selection. So now we have course.001, which is just our road, and then we have the rest of this, and we want to have a texture on this. So what we can do, since these are in separate objects, though they have the same so if I change, if I change anything about the material here, if I change it to say a different texture, then both of these change, both the road and this, because they're both linked to the same material. Um, so actually that was, that was dumb, I didn't want to do that. Um, well, I did want to do that. Um, but so I can remove, I don't want to use that material. I want to create a new material and I'm going to call it grass. And I'm going to go image texture, open textures, and let's find grass texture. Um, I'm stealing these textures for myself. That's not going to be a good grass texture um, I, for what what I want. This is the grass texture I'm looking for. This is the droid I'm looking for, and I'm I want to apply it to these faces. What am I doing? I'm doing a more advanced thing called circle selecting. This is C, and then I'm just dragging over, and it, this is one way instead of control clicking, which could lead to selecting the wrong faces that you don't want, you're instead a, uh, just going here, and you are pressing C, and then just dragging it along. If you accidentally do this, it's middle uh, mouse to deselect, scrolling up and down, uh, changes the how fine it is, uh, right click, and then you can s move around and then C to activate circle select again. Um, so this is more of an advanced, um, maybe not advanced per se, um, but it's not a total beginner thing. I find it useful though, so I'm still showing it. Um, and at this point I can probably control click and that would be faster. So I want to uh, P Sorry, yes, I forgot to explain this last time. Uh, P is to how you separate by selection, or by anything, really. We're going to use uh, P at, at the very end of our custom track to uh, separate everything by material. Um, and sometimes loose parts is easy to work with different objects in different areas. But we selected all the grass that we wanted. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to select this grass. Uh, make sure that we're not including this fence here and then top view and for the grass you can just do a simple UV project from view and scale it up and boom you have grass around your course um, I'd probably scale this up some yeah that looks that looks better I think um, uh, and then uh, for these walls I uh, let's have them be a stone material so let's remove this material here Let's add a new material. You can have two materials here by clicking this button. And then what you can do is you can say, I want I, I want these vertices to have material two, and the rest of them have material one, right? 
and then you can P to separate by material. And then you have, well, this is a separate object from this. And that can be useful in some things. But I don't want that. I'm going to instead have both of them be the same material. And let's call this cliff. And let's have a new color, image texture, open textures. And uh, what's a good, that's not good. It's like too felty. This is a good one. Um, but I'm going to go with my classic. Um, and finding textures is a whole thing. Um, uh, Jasper has a really large texture collection that's pretty good. Um, I, I There's a few, uh, the textures resource um, I, has a good uh, bunch of games that have textures ripped from and so there are a few games in there that I really like the textures from, and then also uh, a lot of super tux cart textures. Um, but that is neither here nor there, so we've selected everything. So notice this fence is going to be with our cliff texture as well, that's fine. And we're just going to do a cube reject, as that's typically yields the best results, though it's not in this case, because we notice some weird, like what's going on, it's going there everywhere. So let's try a simple unwrap, and that's looking a lot better. Uh, we notice since th these are like separate objects, we're not getting the nice topology that we want. Um, and let's see, on the inside, yeah, inside this is looking good. Outsides are looking good. So I think the one thing that we need to address is over here. This is kind of weird. So what we're going to do, since it doesn't matter all that much, you notice we can't also like pick shortest path because these aren't connected. So let's try merging by distance. Yeah, no, so these are separate, um, even though they aren't. So we're gonna select these and we can just UU and now they look a lot closer together. Um, and so you can also like, if this then messes with that, well then uh, this might is actually connected to that so then you can select this and follow from view and that might be more the look you're going for and then you might say oh let's let's follow from view again uh, and now we can't do that here so actually let's go here you you and actually that looks good anyways so that's how we do something like that I haven't saved at all which is normal for me so now let's uh, make this fence texture and then let's add some vegetation, and then we'll be done with our model. Um, so let's control click, control click, control click, and control click. And we're going to make a new material, assign it here, and we're going to call it fence. So we've, we have this one object, which has two different materials to it, and different uh, parts of it. Uh, have different UV maps and materials. So let's have a new texture. Image texture, open, textures, and uh, that might be, this is probably what we want. And what we're going to do, we're going to U, U, U to unwrap, and then R, R to rotate, and then S to scale. I'm probably going too fast, I apologize. Uh, scale on the X direction so it's less spread out here. And then we can simply follow from view. So let's, tr let's try to see if we can just neatly UF. And yes, it nicely wraps around the whole object, which is nice. Otherwise, you'd have to do the two square, uh, two grid by shape trick um, and occasional uh, unwrappings. No, I keep trying to save by habit, but uh, I'm not actually going to make this into a track. So uh, now what we do to make this into a, oh, let's add vegetation. Yes, forgot about that. You'd add a plane, shift add, add a plane, uh, rotate by 90, maybe rotate on the Z direction, RZ, zoom into it. Maybe let's uh, scale it on the Z direction some, GZ. And then you can always, if you want to, you can 
move this vertex up, Alt Z, and G Z to move that up, or you can rotate on the X direction, rotate on G Z, try to maneuver it that way. Either way, add a new material, let's call it bush, and image texture, open textures, and um, maybe that. Let's go with this. So notice this isn't exactly what we want, but we just go into our UV editing, Q to zoom in, hit A to select everything, and then we can see the UVs pop up here, and we're just going to in GY, move it on the Y direction, and uh, GY, shift click to um, make it more precise, and then we can shift D, which duplicates. Wow, is that the first time I've had shift D? Okay, yes, that is a very, very common thing, is how do I duplicate an object? You shift D, that's how you do that. And RZ, and then you type in the value 90. And there we have a bush, and you can select both of these, scale it down, bring it in, scale it on the X direction if you wanted to, etc. Um, so this is where I'm gonna leave it. Uh, actually, one last thing, one last thing. We're gonna do our favorite tool, Control R, add a loop cut, we're gonna bring it back, and we're going to go across, select this, add a new material, uh, boost, image, open, textures, arrow, assign, and then UU, to grid by shape, scale it up. Uh, let's see if I scale it out or in the wrong direction, rotate by 90 here. Scale GX, scale Y. And it doesn't matter exactly for animations purposes. Um, but now we have, yep, okay. Now we have a boost ramp. Um, and you do your common uh, things when exporting is make sure your face orientation is correct. So you go into this drop down menu, go to face orientation, anything red is the wrong way around. So you have to click, select those faces that are problematic. And then uh, there's a way to do it up here, but Alt N and flip. I believe it's, maybe it's in there. No, it's not in there. Um, but that's how you unwrap, or that's how you flip normals. And so you want to make sure all the normals are facing the correct direction. And then for Blender, you export it um, by material. So you join everything together, and that's A, Control, J, and then A, it's probably gonna crash, it didn't. And then select everything P to separate by material. And now it crashed. And that's what I'd like to show you. Um, I hope that you found this Blender introduction custom track oriented thing helpful.